Okay, so what are guide tones? And how can they help us to play better and more melodic? Welcome to another lesson here with Ulrich and Tomcat. Meow. Yeah, so today we have a really, really great topic. The question is, what are guide tones and how can we use them to play more musically? Let's go back to the very basics. <laughs> harmony we usually think of all the chords as dominant seven chords and that's kind of unusual because usually a dominant seven chord only comes on the five of the chord harmony but in blues we have all dominant seven chords you know you might remember when you started playing the blues there is a way to play the blues like this remember that one well this interval here is the dominant seven so another way to play those chords would be to play straight up dominant seven chords, you know? All dominant seven, yeah? All right, so now we've got that out of the way. Let's think, what are really the important notes here in this dominant seven chords? When we do that, we'll find out that the important notes, beside the root note, of course, are the third and the dominant seven, which is a flat seven, yeah? So if we just play those three notes, we can perfectly outline the chord. So in this case, I'm here in an E flat tuning in B flat, so sounding A, A seven, or B flat seven, what happens if I play the next chord, the four chord, also with the guide tones? This is my root note, this is my third, and this is my flat seven. So, wow, that's cool. What do you think, Tomcat? All right, so. What else do we need for the blues? We need the, the five chord, which would be an F here. So I play, this is my F, back to the E flat, the four, and back to the one chord, wow. So we have the whole blues progression that way with just with guide tones, yeah? Let's do this with a metronome really slow. <laughs> Here we go, Tomcat. Two, three.
So quickly, you can see how melodic those changes sound by just using the very essential notes. Why is that? Because the resolution of the third is really the, the critical melodic element. That's the note that changes from one chord to the next. A lot of the other notes are just filler notes. If you look at a B-flat 7 chord, you know, see that note just stays the same, yeah? So in a way it's even not that important, yeah? Or, or the, the root note here, same thing. See? So the essential notes are really those guide tones. But you know, there's a way more powerful application than just by playing chords. And that is that we can use those guide tones in our solo, in addition and on top of the regular pentatonic scale that we play. Because it's the note that changes going from one chord to the next. So why not focus on that one note that changes? Let's see what that sounds like. You ready, Tomcat? You sound excited. Let's do this again with the metronome. One, two, And you see, I get the most musical results when I start mixing it with regular pentatonic licks and just organic kind of playing. You never want to make the mistake. Listen, Tomcat, never want to make the mistake to just apply a theoretical principle and stick to it stubbornly. You want always your ears to guide you and to create something musical and melodic. Only for practice purposes, we will go and use a metronome and just lo lo locate those guide tones and see how one goes into the other on the next chord. But then it's time to make music. Don't you agree? Because music is always king. So how do you practice that? Well, it's time for you to locate your guide tones starting with the blues. Eventually, you can apply this principle to any chord progression, any song, but we're gonna stick to the blues here because it's a relatively easy, simple harmonic progression. So what you wanna do is you wanna practice this in all 12 keys and just find your guide tones all over the neck. You know, even in B flat, we have this position, but we can also start here, right? So just locate them everywhere on the neck, and not only on the low strings, also on the high strings. See? Once you located them and you can play towards them, you can just play blues phrases and resolve them into the guide tones and you will see how powerful you will be able to outline the changes melodically just by changing that one note or actually those two notes the third and the seventh all right tomcat are you ready i think we're ready to apply this whole principle to a blues song <laughs> And again, I'm not gonna overdo it because there's nothing more annoying than just mechanically sticking to one concept. You know, we won't always wanna make music out of it. So even at the beginning, I might just use one guide note 
here and there to accent the changes. Check it out. starting to see the power of those guy tones. Can you see how they are like the rails of your improvisation where you can lean out back and forth, you know, but always go back to the guy tones and you will always stay on track with outlining your changes. Even if you just think of the pentatonic scale and then add in your guy tones on top of that, you will truly transform your blues playing. I think it's one of the most important aspects and just because it comes kind of out of the jazz practice, many blues players are not aware of that. That's one way to break out of the pentatonic boxes immediately. What do you think Tom Cat? I think it's pretty mind blowing. Before I wrap it up here, I want to show you another way how we can use those guide tones to play a blues solo and use them to play the chords and the melody at the same time. It sounds more complicated than it is, because once you have those guide tones under your fingers, you'll start to play around with them. That's exactly what I'm doing here. One, two, three. One more time.
Yeah. So that's how you can use guide tones to accompany yourself or someone else, of course, too, and play solo at the same time. You know, it's really a way to play solo blues. <laughs> All right, let's sum it up really quick. So today, me and Tomcat introduced you to the concept of guide tones in a blues context. We learned the theoretical background of how we can outline dominant seventh chord with just the seventh and the third. Of course, this works with any chord, but we won't go into this here in this lesson. And then I showed you how you can use those guide tones to play a full blues progression with just the essential notes the next step was to use those same notes in your solo on top of the regular blues pentatonic notes. And then at the end here, I also showed you how you can play a solo blues by just accompanying yourself with the guide tones and filling in blues phrases in between for a very orchestral solo blues arrangement. So me and my buddy here, we really Hope that you enjoyed this lesson. It kind of opened up new perspectives for you because this is exactly what this channel is about. And of course, it doesn't end here with the YouTube videos because there's only so much you can learn in one little YouTube lesson. But instead, I want to invite you to check out my full-blown guitar program where I offer personal mentoring one-on-one -on -one with you. Sign up to my free guitar class down below and you will not only get more information of how you can transform your playing, but you'll also get the information of how you can join my program and how you can get my mentoring. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you very soon. That was it, Tomcat. You want to play some more blues? <laughs>